Hey, Desmond Du here from No Sleep Creative. Congratulations on making it to part 3 of this master study. Good news, we don't have trigonometry expression in this one, so you can rest easy. I hope you love the show today. As always, let's get to the motion analysis. Here we have the reference scenes we'll be replicating today. What do you observe? As you can see, the pattern scales down in Y axis and then compresses in the X axis. As it becomes smaller, we have the triangle revealing and it rotates as it scales down further. This is the pattern we'll be building and animating today. And that's all for the analysis. So a lot of people have been asking me, how do you get good expression? How do you get deeper into it? The only thing I can say is that practice will lead to mastery. I have a basic expression workshop that I did a while back ago as a live stream, so that can get you started. The link is in the description below. So the thing about the challenging thing about coding or writing expression is not really writing the code itself. It's about changing your brain and developing a mental model of how this computer language works, or how the syntax works. And then, so for me, when I first started out, uh, for the longest time, I didn't know what I was writing. Uh, I didn't know what a for loop statement was. I could write it, but I could never understand, you know, what exactly I was writing. And uh, if, and then I didn't understand what function was, even though I read the definition so many times. And uh, after about three months of like consistent effort, my brain suddenly switched. It finally clicked within me, and I could understand briefly what exactly was going on. So if you're new to expression and if you're struggling. That's perfectly normal. You have to be patient with your journey and just keep putting in effort every single day to learn more about expression. So I also have a wiki page where I document all the expression that I wrote and found on the forum. So please check that out if you haven't. This is another good practice that you can adopt to kind of track your learning journey and also so that you don't have to memorize all the expression that you learn or you found, right? And so that's all the nugget of wisdom I have for you. And with that, let's get on with the tutorial. In After Effects, create a composition that is 1080 by 1080, 24 frames per second, and 5 seconds long. Click OK. And first of all, let's double click to create a rectangle too. And let me change the color green so you can see it. And uh, let's call this master. We're going to need six more of these. So let's duplicate it. So there'll be one for the top, duplicate it, and one for the bottom. And we need uh, four more for the sides. Let's call this side underscore one. And just duplicate it like that. So let's hit Command Shift H to show our our bounding boxes and rearrange them. So this is site 4 and then site 3 will be over here. Site number 2 will be on the top right and site 1 will be on the top left. And then this will be at the bottom and this will be at the right. Just as long as you have this configuration that's alright. And next thing we're going to do is just to rearrange the anchor point. So with the top layer selected, uh, I'm going to center the anchor point at the bottom and then grab the one at the bottom and send it to the top and then we'll just do the cor reposition it to the corners for our side squares like that and once we've done that we can grab the our uh, all our boxes in the center and go into our align panel and then after that just align to the composition and let's zero out the position the y not the y the x so Actually, yes, the Y. So for the one at the bottom, it'll be 1080. And the one on the top will be 0. And then we can grab the first two, uh, site 1 and 2. Set the X position. Set the Y position to both to be 0. And then for site number 1, it'll be 0 as well. And then site 2 will be 1080. And then the one, site 4, will be 1080 by 1080. And then site number 3, uh, the one at the bottom left, will be... 1080 by, sorry, it should be 0 by 1080. There we go. Now we can select everything and just parent it to the master. And then let's close it. Let's color our master to be green. And we're going to use an expression that we used previously that doesn't inherit, uh, that allows our scale, uh, our child not to inherit the scale from the master. So I'm going to paste it in onto my top here. And then after that, now I can copy this expression and paste it into the rest of the layers. And now I am just going to animate the scale, right? Press S on the master, uncheck constraint proportion, click on the stopwatch, 
animate it from 100 to let's go down first 50% in the y-axis and because everything is green so we have to change the color so let's change the top and bottom to blue and the corners the corner squares to be red so you guys can see clearly and then uh, after a few frames now let's have the scale go down to 50. so one thing to realize is that you know it looks like it's working but Notice that the scale of the top and bottom, they're not actually scaling accordingly to our master in terms of the X scale. So we got to make a modification to this expression, which we already did in the previous tutorial. So you should be familiar. All we need to do, we need to inherit the X scale. So we need to type in square bracket, 100, comma, S, and then square bracket, 1. So this will inherit only X and not inherit the Y scale from our parent. Copy this and paste it to the bottom. And then we can unsolo every layer. And uh, we can see that it has worked, right? If I deploy it. Very cool. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is to create the internal triangle fill. So let's duplicate our top square layer. And let's name this triangle underscore top. So if you're on the Mac, you can type option J to get a triangle. I'm gonna label it yellow and change my fill to white. Let's solo it. And let's press S to get a scale. Option click on the stopwatch to get rid of the expression. And then I am going to press UU to open up all my properties. Right click on the rectangle path and click convert to bezier path. And then what you want to do is go to the delete vertex tool and just click on the top left. And then you get a triangle. And now we can animate the scale, right? Let's actually set it to be uh, uncheck constraint proportion and set the scale for the Y to be 50 and the scale for the X to be 0 so it's going to start off uh, from nothing and then it's going to stretch it out to oh one thing we forgot to do is to set the anchor point on the bottom right so let's undo that set it like this and let's let's uh, set the anchor point to be bottom right with this script alright and now let's actually now we can set it to 0 and shift this keyframe to the front and then we will set our scale to be maybe, let's see, 50 by 50. So uh, let's play it. Let's go. Let's actually unsolo it so you can you guys can see it. All right. So as it as this configuration opens up, you see the triangle stretching out. Maybe they need to stretch out even more, but you get the point for now, right? So we're going to do the same thing for the bottom. Uh, let's duplicate it. Let's call this option uh, triangle underscore bot, label it yellow. And then after that, set, change the color to white. And then change the anchor point to the bottom, uh, top left, right? And then press UU, get to rectangle path, convert to bezier path. Also get rid of the uh, expression. So press S, option click on the stopwatch, change to the bezier to uh, delete vertex to sorry and then click on the bottom right and we get our triangle and then to make our life easier let's link the scale to the triangle top so let's press triangle uh, <laughs> press s option click on the stopwatch and then let's link it like that and see what happens and as we play it you can see yes it's working so we have one set of triangle done now we need to do it for the opposing side so let's duplicate this the triangle top right and let's get rid of the keyframes and then we need to right click transform and then let's do flip horizontal so we have it on the other side and so this needs to be on top right and let's change the color to green and then um, let's see so we only for for the one for this triangle we only want to link the the y the y scale uh, so we can do so option click on the stopwatch let's grab our let's create a variable called s and grab the scale right the scale from triangle top and then semicolon square bracket value square bracket zero comma and then s square bracket one so we're just grabbing we're using our original own value for x and then just inheriting the y scale from our triangle top now if i were to animate you know this triangle this triangle's Y scale, it'll always be connected like that. And uh, if I do the X, you can see it's not connected. So this gives us more control. So if we were to play it now, 
So I guess we also want to animate uh, this the, this green triangle to go from 0 to 100. But I'm going to leave it for now. And I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. Just create our second set of our, our opposing triangles. So let's put it on top. And let's name this to, instead of top, un, top 2, let's call it top un, underscore corner. So bot underscore corner. And for this one, right, uh, again, let's see. Let's uh, get rid of the scale first. Right click, transform, flip horizontal. And then now we can actually copy the expression from the, the top corner and then paste it over here. And there we go. Let's change the green so we can see it in action. Okay. Right, so it's working. Uh, our set is almost complete. And let's set our, let's say Command K and then change our composition size to 1920 now. And uh, so the next thing we need to do is to create, uh, uh, kind of do some troubleshooting. Because we're going to animate it from going from 0 to, you know, to be actually, let's say, negative 20 degree. But the rotate we should not inherit the rotation of our parent. So we're going to write a very simple expression. Go into our site our site uh, square, I press R, option click on the stopwatch, type in value minus parent dot transform parent dot transform dot rotation. So basically this is kind of like uh, stop it from inheriting the rotation. Uh, and then we can just paste it onto the other rotation as well. And then we got to put all this at the bottom beneath the master. There we go. So, but then here, this introduces a problem. First of all, our triangle is not long enough. And if you were to actually solo the sides and then also the master, you can see that, uh, let's see, also the top and bottom. You can see there's some gap in between as well, right? Because it's not rotating, so it's not covering the gaps. So to just solve this problem first, select our site 2 and go to our effects and preset panel and type in motion towel. So this is a cheat, uh, cheat way of working. And the, I guess the easiest way, if you were to set it, set the motion, the tower center to 600 for the X and click mirror edge, this solves the problem. So we can copy this and paste it onto site number three, but instead of 1,600, uh, instead of 600 of X value to 1,200. Okay. Then that's, that's, well, and our, so that's uh, something we fix. And now we need to fix the, we need to extend the triangle. Again, another cheat way is to open up the triangle, add in the repeater. And then we are going to open it up, set the copies to 2, and then open up transform, set the scale to 200. So you get a bigger triangle, and you can just position it, position this triangle using the X scale. And actually even, we can, you can set it to, I guess, 0 in the X position. Yeah, and then just play with the Y position. But we need to be longer, so let's push it in the X, X, X. Uh, let's, yeah, as long as you get it aligned, it should be fine. So you want to align as much as you can. Okay, so something like that. Okay, yes, so this will be good. And if you were to change the scale, you can see it's like aligned perfectly. So you don't need to worry about it like not being aligned. So that's fine. I'm going to set it at that scale. But you can see that, you know, it's it's showing a little bit too much. What we can do is go to effects and preset panel and type in set mat and set it to be site number two and make sure effects and preset uh, effects and mass is selected for the type of uh, the mat. And uh, we can copy this to our bottom corner, set it to be site number three. And also let's copy this repeater and paste it onto the triangle bottom. And it doesn't copy perfectly. Uh, but we just need to shift the y position, the x and y position, in the transform. So let's do that. All right. Let's actually zero it out first, and then we can play with the x-axis to be. Let's just say let's make it five hundred, and then let's increase the y, decrease the y, till we get this the nice extension. Let's see. So this will some. This will take some time. Let's just zoom in and then let's play with the Y axis. There we go. Yes. And then 
So I noticed something over here. You, If you were to go over here, there seems to be... Yeah, so I guess our triangles just need to be bigger. And this will solve the problem. I think it overextended. Like that. Uh, is uh, Could it be because... Oh, uh, I guess it's okay if, it, if it's a little bit too much. We just, we just need to put the triangle, right? Just beneath the mat just beneath the bot layer so up on top of the master and this will solve the problem we're just hiding it behind so just uh, less thing to worry about all right so we fixed that and now we can introduce the noise for our top left and bottom right layer so following the previous i think in part one tutorial we made this noise plate over here right and then so what we're gonna do is just put it uh, at the bottom of site one and then let's get our track mat and set it to alpha mat. And let's duplicate it and do it for and put it underneath site 4. And uh, make sure you turn off uh, site 4. There we go. So the last thing we need to do here is to change the colors. So I'm going to change the color. So now the color is changed. All right. So this is the color setup uh, that I have prepared. And then... Let's combine it with our animation. So if you follow the previous tutorial, you should have something like this. I highly recommend you to follow the original Ordinary Folk video for like timing and uh, for that animation timing. So we're gonna combine uh, whatever we made here, right? The part two with our part three over here. So what we can do is actually copy our layers from the build, this pattern or this build that we just made and put it over here, just like we did in part two but we will get so many layers. And then just, so I'm gonna show you another way of working, All right? I am going to make use of master properties. And so if you go to windows, essential graphics, right? I'm going to select the layer. So let's actually rename this layer, this composition C3 underscore demo, so we can see it clearly. So I'm gonna select under master, go find C3 demo, right? And I'm, I can name it C3 demo. And then I can go into, uh, let's press U, right? To get all my animated properties. And uh, we can grab all the all properties over here and drop it in. And then, so we're gonna animate this, uh, all these properties from within, from just a pre-comp, right? So I'm gonna also name it correctly. So this is a uh, triangle underscore scale. Let's name that. And then the second one will be our parent scale. And the rotation can stay as it is. And uh, we gotta do one more thing. Let me just put this over here for now. Uh, so we need to create a master scaler uh, because here's the thing: when we the size of this uh, of this square of this it should the size of the the, the middle bar shouldn't be this shouldn't be this uh, shouldn't be a square. It should be a little bit wider. And we can't, we can't actually animate it from here, right? We can't animate the X scale here because what happens is that when we rotate it, the act, the rotation does not uh, follow accordingly, right? It's not flat. It, it's because the scale is getting skewed. So if it was 50, if the scale was, uh, the X and Y scale are uh, the same value, we don't get this, uh, this problem. So we got to create new now object. Let's call this master. Oops, let me just, yes, let's call this master underscore scalar and collapse everything. And we're going to animate the scale, right? Also, the starting scale should be, let's see, it should be about 180. And then, yep, it's just going to come down first, right? So it's just going to come down and then push in. But we do, like I say, we don't want it to be a square. So we're gonna put a keyframe here, for and then for for the master scaler, put it on, and just align it to the, the keyframe, the second keyframe, with our parent. And we're gonna shift it up so we can see it clearly, and we can also grab our triangle top and shift it, so we get all our keyframes, our first three layers as keyframes, and let's change uncheck constraint proportion. And then let's stretch. We oh, we need to. What we need to do is to parent this master to the master scale. 
And now I can just play with this, um, with the master scale, right? To stretch it out. And if I were to rotate it, you can see, you know, I'm still retain retaining my rotation. So maybe that's a little bit too wide. Let's do about 175. And uh, so just a, just a quick uh, troubleshoot technique. Uh, let's see. All right. So now, all right. So that's fine. Okay. So the animation timing, you don't have to worry it because we can animate it on the outside. So let's grab our essential uh, graphics panel again. And then let's drop in our scale property from master scale and put it in, in there. So let's name this to be master underscore scale. And let's put it on top. Okay. And we can close this actually. And let's save this. So if you follow part two, you should have this animation done up. Now we're going to go to project panel and grab the build that we just made, right? So let's place C tree around here and let's label it orange and then let's play it. So one thing we need to do is we actually need to turn off the parent in C tree, right? Because we need to review what's underneath and to kind of solve the, that, uh, to kind of have the background show up at the back, uh, we are going to Let's see. So the quickest way I could I could do it was to go inside, just copy the master scale and master, and then go back to our comp over here. Let's also change it to blue so we don't get confused. Oop, change it to blue, and uh, I'm gonna just name it, name it import master underscore bg, so I don't get confused. And same thing, import master scale. And uh, I'm going to pull up the keyframes, press U, press U, and then let's also, so this import master, right? Make sure it should be parented to, it should be parented to this uh, master scale now that we just copy. So let me just double check. So parent and link. So yes, it is parent. And then next thing we want to do is to, we can get rid of the keyframe and then option click of all on all of them. Press U on the C tree com that we made. And we're just gonna link it. So we're gonna link this scale, the master scale, you know, all to all our master properties. And then let's place it in, let's see, for the master BG, it'll be the parent scale, and then the rotation as well. And now let's color this background, right? Uh, let's maybe just put on the fill so we can see it. And I'm just gonna put it beneath somewhere around here, right? So we want to show it at around frame 15. So let's just put, uh, have the endpoint start there, right? So we're gonna, not going to have anything and then it shows up. All right, so we can see that work. Now let me get rid of the fill. Oops. So let me go into that, get rid of the fill. There we go. So it might be a bit abrupt. I guess uh, it should appear at frame 21 instead. So somewhere, yeah, somewhere here. It's when it appears. Okay, so the, uh, we have a lot of keyframing work to do. And again, I highly recommend going to the original video, original Ordinary Folk video and just reference the timing and what's happening. Okay, just to speed things up, I copy the keyframes from uh, my previous setup for the preview animation. So I'm gonna walk you through on how to animate it. I'm gonna solo this layer. So what you wanna do first is to animate the Y scale of the of the top and bottom bar coming down, right? And then it is going to stretch out to, it's just going to stretch out, uh, stretch in or compress in, right? To form the square. And make sure you animate the master scale uh, because if I didn't, I don't have the master scale, right? If I, let me just set it to so 100, it will be a square. So you want it to be wider. So this is, this the master scale is there to prevent the skewing. Uh, of our shape over here and as this is going right as it scales inwards you want to have the triangle uh, scaling in the x-axis towards the center and this as and you have to base this uh, the scaling the timing with uh, the, the rotation with the rotation speed right the, based on the middle line so actually this could be a little bit faster so let's yeah something like that yes so it could yeah just one one frame faster there we go 
So you want to align it like that. And then once this, you finish this tree animation, and then you just want to rotate it, have it rotate it to about like negative 30 degree, and the scene will change. There we go. And of course, you can always animate the triangle going spreading to the left or the right. Um, but if I were to play it now, right, you should, yeah, it should kind of loop seamlessly like that. So this is so part, so this part is finally done. And if you pull up part two of the tutorial, you should have like this part done up, right? As you, you should have it link overlay, uh, have the shot, two, two parts of the shot overlaid like that. So if you were to just make the changes to the existing comp, right? It should just play seamlessly. Okay, so this should be your end result by the end of this tutorial. And be patient. I think the, mo the, the, the part that's going to take the most time is just getting the timing down. So yes, all the best with that. And we're done. Congratulations on making it to the end of this part 3 tutorial. I know it must have been challenging to write expressions and animate at the same time, but you just need a little patience and practice to make everything work. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, subscribe so this video can get to more people. I hope you love this master study. If you made something with this tutorial, please tag me on Instagram at Desmond2 because I'd love to see what you came up with on your own. Alright, that's all I have for you guys. I'll see you next time. So a lot of people have been asking me that, how do you get do it? So a lot of people have been asking me, so a lot of people have been asking me, a lot of people have been asking me, so a lot of people have been asking me, <sighs> how do you get deeper into it? My response to that is, the only thing I can say, link is in the description below. A lot of people have been asking me that, how do you get deeper into expression with uh, the, uh, the, the, well, that, go. A lot of people have been asking me, how do you get good expression? How do you get deeper into it? The only thing I can say is that practice will lead to mastery.